Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Messiah Lutheran Church on this, a historic Reformation Sunday. It's so wonderful to have you joining us for worship. I'm Pastor Dustin, and on behalf of everyone at Messiah Lutheran Church and Trinity Reformed Church, we would like to welcome you uh, to our joint uh, Mass this morning. It's, uh, it's so wonderful to have you. This Sunday, we are, uh, it's, it's a really important Sunday. We are uh, ready to announce uh, some historic um, uh, decisions that have uh, uh, been been made in our uh, collective uh, common faith community, uh, as well as to hear from a number of uh, folks who have been impacted by the ministries of our congregation, and finally to um, uh, commit ourselves to make a statement of intent of how we are supporting our ministries in 2021. It is so, so wonderful to have you join us. And with that said, let's begin with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us in all of creation. Amen. And let us, uh, taking a brief pause, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. 
We confess that we are captive of sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble. Cast away our transgressions and turn us again to life in you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And friends, God hears the cries of all who call out in need. And through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. grace of Jesus Christ our Savior, the reconciling love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. 
Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel and bestow on the church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we continue, friends, with the first reading. Our first lesson this morning comes to us from Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. Listen for a word from God. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another, say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, uh, as we begin here, I'm, I'm, I'm very mindful of the fact that one of my favorite kind of moments uh, of the church year together uh, is uh, walking in and, you know, during the opening procession on Reformation Sunday and usually the church is completely full and everyone is singing, uh, you know, Almighty Fortress. I'm not going to sing it. Almighty Fortress is our God. <laughs> and I miss that. It's also uh, looking at the incredible shot of Lake Champlain. I'm also mindful uh, that it was literally standing right there in Burlington on the, the shore of Lake Champlain in Burlington, Vermont, where I was making the calls to, and online and talking with folks to uh, cancel uh, in-person worship uh, for what I thought was just a couple weeks this past March, and obviously it's been a lot longer. Hold those things in mind, friends, as we hear the gospel, because there is indeed uh, good news amidst all this difficulty. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying, You will be made free? And Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household, but the son has a place there forever. So, if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. This, my siblings in Christ, is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. As I said, it just kind of hit me in two different ways. The pain of not being physically 
uh, present uh, with you this morning, both in, in hearing, uh, you know, Jill so beautifully sing, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, and seeing that shot of the waterfront uh, of Lake Champlain in Burlington. And uh, I guess in a different way than I, I usually experience it, it, it's a bigger reminder than usual of how much I miss physically being with you all. And I think that's kind of the point. What I believe today's gospel message, what the message of the Reformation has to teach us, dear friends, dear siblings in Christ, is the incredible reminder that new birth is painful. New life is often painful. Being set free is painful. But in new birth, but in new life, but in Christian freedom, there is incredible, incredible promise. I know. Spoke a little bit about my own personal story um, last week, and I usually don't try to, you know, too, too often because the sermon shouldn't be about me, but I couldn't stop, help, but um, this past weekend as I was spending uh, time with my uh, father and brother and stepmother of uh, thinking about um, a time of immense pain for me personally, but also the, the blessings and freedom I found in that moment. And I think it has a lot to do with our message for us today. So, amidst all the pain of what we're, we've been experiencing over the last months, and especially, perhaps, for whatever reason, most recently, as there's a third wave of coronavirus, as the weather gets colder and it's harder to see people uh, in person, um, but also as I'm hearing incredibly exciting news about how we are continuing to, in some ways, birth a new uh, faith community here at Messiah and, and, and Trinity together, I think uh, back to a moment of incredible pain in my own life. I remember uh, driving um, to uh, my church where I grew up, Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Manchester, Connecticut, on the day of my mother's funeral, um, almost, what, 12 years ago now. And I felt so incredibly, truly alone. I had just graduated from college. The Great Recession was, was, was right at the, the early days of it. I had just, uh, it, w- it wasn't the most opportune time to become a, um, a salesman of uh, financial instruments through Thrivent. Um, and I definitely, you know, did not want to spend life as an insurance agent, but I didn't know what God was calling me to do at all. I, I felt dejected. I felt alone. I, I missed my mom. I... I, I felt like I had no friends. It, it was, you know, I was sort of living alone in New Hampshire felt absolutely hopeless. I went and, you know, uh, usually the way it worked at, at, at Emmanuel is that before, uh, uh, you know, a funeral, uh, you know, the family of the person we were celebrating in mourning would sort of sit in the church library before the service started. And then the sort of the pastor would sort of walk us in immediately before uh, the service began. And I walked into that sanctuary and the spirit in some really powerful way I'll never forget it began really deeply working on my heart as I looked up and I saw a sanctuary absolutely and this far bigger than than the Messiah sanctuary some of y'all have been there for my ordination years ago absolutely full to the brim of loved ones family, friends, and about half of the folks there were my friends from Camp Calumet. And these are people, some people from camp I hadn't seen in a couple years. Some people maybe I had even like an argument with or all too often I say like dumb things, you know. I maybe had offended um, uh, dear friends from, from decades, uh, folks I went to Sunday school with, um, <laughs> my bosses who had yelled at me for misbehaving while on staff or whatever. <laughs> a wide uh, assortment of folks. And I realized that amidst so much pain, 
so much difficulty that there was hope. That life hadn't ended as I was losing my mom, that, that in some ways new life was beginning. And you know, I was buoyed by, in, in a strange way by the rest of the day. I remember in a strange way sort of at the reception, you know, after, after the service being exact, absolutely sort of just not elated. Obviously, it's morning so difficult, you know, it was such difficulty and it was so hard, but also just sort of feeling so much incredible support, uh, so much uh, incredible life amidst so much pain. And it was sort of on that drive back up home to New Hampshire uh, from uh, my, my mother's funeral service that I, is when I just sort of really in a deeper way started mulling over in my head, you know, my goodness, none of us uh, live uh, forever. And what are we going to do with the one life on this earth we're given? And what quickly popped into my head was that in some way I wanted to uh, replicate or build a, a similar community with a similar level of support and love and caring and sense of service to the world that I had experienced for so many years at camp and that I had continued experienced uh, on that you know, most difficult uh, day of my life at my mother's funeral. And in that intense pain, and in amid that intense support, during such a hard time, in some, the Spirit, I believe, somehow uh, uh, worked on me, uh, in some ways uh, helped set me free to imagine and think about what I was truly passionate about, and in some ways sent me out on the road to in some ways be a part of that passion, to be, begin that journey. Soon thereafter, I realized, well, well perhaps maybe the best way I could uh, create that sort of loving, supporting, welcoming, uh, service-oriented community uh, was to be a pastor, right? Uh, the Camp Kaimetz Lutheran Church, uh, a Lutheran Church camp. I, I thought, well, well, I can in some ways maybe perhaps help cultivate a congregation, work with like-minded folks, good people to, to build the similar type of community that is so desperately needed in the world and, and hopefully in some small way make a difference. It was in that immense pain, out of the immense difficulty of that day, as difficult as it was, that in some small way, God made new life happen and set me on the trajectory that brings me right here in front of these two cameras <laughs> for you today. In short, friends, all of us in our humanity, it's all too easy for us to forget who we truly are at times. It's, we have a human propensity, and in, in the Christian tradition we call that propensity sin, to forget who we truly are at times. We, we get focused on ourselves. Uh, we get, we get, we, we get uh, bogged down in our doubts and our pain and our fears. We, we, we think it's all up to us. We, we get bogged down in thinking that in some way we are alone at facing all the problems in the world. We forget. The incredible truth that we are all equally gathered up as one family around one common table as beloved children of God. And I think it's sometimes, especially in those darkest moments, in those times of death, of pain, of loneliness, of sorrow, that God doesn't cause these things, but in some way he works in them to bring new life into being, or in other words, to remind us of who we truly are. 
That is the story of the resurrection, right? The resurrection does not happen without those three dark days in the tomb. The people in today's gospel story had forgotten, just like we do, every single day. This text has often been misinterpreted in an anti-Semitic way. That's not the point. Everyone forgets who they are at times, right? So there's a little bit of backstory that's really important to understand today's gospel uh, message, right? So, um, so, so right, these folks were, uh, the, the people that Jesus was, was, was preaching to had actually gathered in Jerusalem for uh, Sukkot, the fest, Feast of the Tabernacles, um, what, something that's still celebrated today, and that's commemorating the Exodus story. And of course, uh, you know, the Exodus story, right, is, is, is the story of the people of Israel uh, fleeing slavery, in Egypt and wandering in the desert for 40 years, completely dependent, not on themselves, but by God's grace, the manna that would fall every night like dew in their journey to the promised land. It's that same exact story of death, from death to resurrection that we hear in the New Testament, right? People bogged down in slavery and, and crying out to God and, and, and wanting something different. But then there's 40 years of pain in the middle before they reach the promised land. And the people, of course, of, of, that Jesus was preaching to literally said they've never been slaves to anybody. They weren't rem remembering that Exodus narrative, that core narrative of who they were. They were forgetting that truth. And, 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 and saying to them that, 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 that the truth will set them free, will make them free uh, people, Jesus is sort of reminding them, just remember simply who you are, beloved children of God. Beloved children of God that do not need to do everything on your own, that do not need to live in a culture of scarcity and death and individuality, but rather to hear the good news that you are part of uh, God's incredible family that has gathered all around one common table, living a life of abundance, of generosity, of teamwork, of community, of new life together. Friends, This Reformation Sunday, about 500 years after the Reformation began, where Martin Luther, you know, nailed uh, those 95 theses on the church door or sent them in the mail, scholars debate it, doesn't really matter. Let's tell the truth. Let's tell the truth. That while the Reformation has done incredible things, in other ways, it's missed its mark. It's missed the mark. The truth is that 500 years ago, Luther and Zwingli and Calvin and all the other early reformers got part of the truth, right, but missed a little bit of it as well, right? Uh, Luther, in his time, uh, to a certain level, uh, preached a lot more, you know, in individualized the notion of salvation and sin, right, and, and didn't talk quite as much about the sins of society and, 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 and how we are, are re collectively redeemed and made it more about one individual person in, in, in relationship with God rather than the fact that all of us are in some way connected and bound up together. We famously know of Luther's uh, anti-Semitism and, and to a lesser extent Islamophobia despite the fact that Jesus was Jewish, despite the fact that it's people of other religions that the, 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 we often interpret as the wise men who, vi who are the ones that know who Jesus is and visit him on the, during the Christmas story, at least in Matthew. The Reformation led to unnecessary divisions along ever so slightly different denominational lines. And, 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 and in many ways as well, you know, the, at least from the Lutheran Reformation, you know, uh, they missed uh, Christ's teachings of radical welcome, of equality amidst for, for women and LGBTQIA folks and, and differently abled folks, different races, people of different customs. 500 years later, in some ways we've messed the mark and you see what's going on because of it. In, in small towns all throughout uh, our country, in a time when there is so much need, there's a, there's a culture of scarcity 
and, and, and individuality and death, right? There might be five churches of slightly different denominations all having their little church that they can't support on their own, and, 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 but, but, but trying to hold on and, and be separate rather than working uh, together for, the, for God's glory in their local community and in communities that are in need more and more and more. In a time when people need to hear Christ's sense of radical welcome, people are oftentimes still left out in faith communities. Just this past Sunday, I sat in on a funeral sermon where I was told that the women ought to be submissive to their husbands. At a time when we are collectively, as a society, in so much pain. This notion of that, that, that the Christian message is just about getting ourselves to heaven is incredibly uh, selfish and incredibly uh, unhelpful to what we are currently experiencing. But friends, that's not the end of the story. That death, that forgetting, that sin is never the end of the story, both for us as individuals and for us in our, our the societies and cultures and communities we're a part of. Hear the good news. Know the truth. The truth will set you free. What you're going to hear um, a little bit more about uh, shortly from our, in our mission moments uh, is the fact that we are, as of January 1st, um, working hard to, to commit to becoming one community with our friends down the street at Trinity Reformed in a way that will allow us to serve our, our community that is growing in need by the day and in, in so many powerful, powerful ways. The fact that we can move past some of those, the silly denominational barriers and work together at a time where the world is so, so divided. The fact that we can proclaim Christ's universal, radical welcome right here in Rotterdam, New York, together. The fact that we can make sure everyone in our, in our local neighborhood is fed in body, mind, and soul. I deeply believe, and maybe this is a little bit verbose, but I, I really think it's true that in some way, what we are a part of right here in our little faith community can in some ways provide a roadmap for another type of reformation that, it, that, that fixes the wrongs of what we kind of missed 500 years ago. Proclaim a reformation, a church that is all about radical hospitality, about connecting the fact of, of the spiritual table, of the communion table, with, 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 with feeding people around a common table, making sure that they are fed in body, mind, and soul all at once. That is life-changing. That is new life that is coming out of the pain, the incredible pain of the last six months. And all of us, friends, are invited into that work, not where none of us are perfect. All of us are suffering right now in different ways. But all of us are called to new life. New birth is painful. New life is painful. Being set free can sometimes be painful. But it is in new birth, in new life, in Christian freedom, that there is incredible, incredible promise. Amen. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' love and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other Every high and stormy gale, my 
Friends, at this time, we will continue our mission uh, moment series as we journey together uh, towards in just a few short minutes, uh, collectively working together to make a statement of intent about how we're going to support our ministries in 2021. Let me say that, uh, to me, this deeply links, you'll see later on in the communion service, vid footage from our food pantry here at Messiah, as well as Trinity Reform's food pantry. And what I like to think of, and today we're talking about our social action ministries, is how we are working together to build that common table where all are welcome for our community. Our first mission moment will be from Eric Nichols, a member of Trinity Reformed who's talked about the importance of service in his faith community and how that's impacted his life and the life of others. Hi. I'm here from Trinity Reformed Church, volunteering, uh, which is something I enjoy very much. Uh, I got my start here doing volunteering work for ministry, uh, volunteering for the Capuchin Soup Kitchens in Michigan, as well as other soup kitchens. Uh, I really feel honored uh, to work with people considered on the margin of society, and I've learned so much from working with people in this environment, more so than I been uh, helping, I've been given uh, to some of the people I've met. In fact, uh, one of the people I've met was a good friend, Isaac Ramirez, some of you may know. Back in Holland, I met him working at the Holland Rescue Mission, and he changed my life. And you just never know who you meet when you work in these environments. And it's just been a blessing to me. This is how I got my start in the ministry and how I love uh, helping people. As you know, hospitality is a big thing in the church. If it wasn't for hospitality, the disciples wouldn't be able to have to eat. They had to depend on people to sustain them and take care of them wherever they went. And so I kind of, you know, consider it an honor to interact with people and doing this. It's just a blessing that's been blessing me. So God had put it on my heart to come out here today. And normally I work on the weekends and I said, I'm not going to miss it. And I enjoy this very much. So I'm just so thankful and glad to be here. Thank you so much, Eric, for that powerful story of uh, how service has impacted your life as part of our common community. Our second mission moment today, friends, is from uh, Christine Camisso, who is a guest of the Bread of Life Food Pantry, whose life we've certainly impacted through our ministries here um, in our faith community. Hi, I'm, I'm Chris. And I just wanted to say how much I appreciated coming here to the uh, to the food pantry and and the folks and how I am treated here. It is amazing how well that I am treated here as opposed to um, other places I have experienced in the in the past. And when my family needed it most, Judy, I, I say Judy, Judy and her church. <laughs> Has has come 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 to the rescue quite a few times. I also um, told my neighbors about this place. I forget where I even heard 
about your, your services. I was in need of services. And my son's worker um, gave me a list of places, and this was right in the area. And when I called, everybody was uh, very receptive. And my upstairs neighbor and I have been coming ever since. And um, we have never gone without, and I know, um, in fact, he, he couldn't make it today. And, and Judy is still in the bags, bags for him, for his family. And that is so much appreciated. And the community garden, I didn't even, wasn't even aware of the community garden here at the church that the church offers. And it's got beautiful, beautiful vegetables coming out of it all summer long. So it's, it's been amazing coming here and getting fresh, fresh vegetables. You don't get that too often. And I just want to say it's, it's been a, a pleasant experience and so helpful. My son, um, I was able to send send his lunches in because I got spoiled with the school system. He became an adult into the adult programs um, of, of special needs folks. And I have to send in breakfast and lunch and I needed I needed that extra food. And and um, the Messiah Church was here to help me. And, and, and for that, I'm very grateful. So I, I just like to thank everybody. And um, I, I would recommend, I have recommended this place to other people. And, um, and I just want to say thanks. When Chris's son, you know, kind of uh, aged out of the school system and, and needed some additional uh, food support, uh, the Bread of Life food pantry was there and made a world of difference. And, 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 and now, you know, Chris no longer needs that help, but is sharing the good news with others that all are fed in body, mind, and soul here. All are welcome. Our final mission moment will be today will be from Christy Becker, our budget and finance chair, talking about uh, the historic uh, nature of what we are about to do. Six years ago, October 2014, that I stood before many of you and expressed what a difficult year had, it had been. We had spent part of it without a pastor and faced uncertainty due to weekly declining attendance. Financially and perhaps spiritually, we were a bit lost. Never ever did I imagine I'd be standing before you today, reflecting back on that time six years ago as a small drop in the bucket. But here we are. 2020 and a year unlike any other in my memory. However, if the last six years have taught us nothing else, there's nothing this congregation can ac accomplish, especially when faced with adversity. To emphasize that point, I want to share with you a little bit of what we've accomplished in 2020. Through September, our year-to-date giving is approximately $12,000 more than this time last year. An impressive number considering a large part of our 2020 giving has been electronic or via mail. Our food pantry recently celebrated five years serving families in the surrounding area. Through September, we've served 8,020 meals, an increase of over 100 from the total served in 2019. In addition, the food pantry moved into a new expanded space within the church this year and started a meal delivery service. We've brought our services online each and every Sunday for the last seven months, reaching not only our current members and friends at Trinity Reformed, but also people looking for a Sunday service. Our outreach has resulted in over 20 individuals currently attending virtual new member classes, and we look forward to welcoming them to the Messiah family. As the Budget and Finance Committee looks forward to crafting a 2021 budget, budget we're excited for the opportunities that lay ahead of us but also mindful of the work we need to do to make fiscally responsible decisions so we as a church family continue to grow. To take on the additional expenses of a second building is unchartered territory. While we've invested the time to make sure we're making an informed decision, it's a careful balance between revenue and expenses. Pastor's story last Sunday about his aversion to discussing money in the church resonated with me. I see myself a little like a killjoy, that person echoing the words of your parents, 
or those that you may have said on one, more than one occasion yourself. Shut the door. Did you grow up in a barn? Turn off the lights. We aren't made of money, you know. Or maybe money doesn't grow on trees. I'm the one who comes into the room and zaps the energy out of it with my money talk. But as Pastor came to understand, if you want to keep the lights on, it's a necessary conversation to have. As you sit with your pledge card in front of you, I ask you to reflect on where we've been, how far we've come, and where we're going. Each and every one of you is an integral part of that. To achieve our goals for 2021 and forward, we'll take a financial and service commitment we never could have envisioned six years ago. And that's great. All I can ask is that you prayerfully consider what Messiah, Trinity, and the future of merging both means to you and that how that translates to what you're comfortable pledging. It's your honest self-reflection that helps us make an informed assessment of our revenue for the upcoming year and craft a budget that spends your money wisely. Imagine if six years from now, we look back at today as the start of something no church had ever done before, a model for others around the country. It's where we were six years ago and look how far we've come. This is another chapter in our story I hope you'll play a part in it. You know, friends, six years ago, uh, two faith communities were in a similar situation. Both had uh, declining numbers and were worried about their future. And two faith communities made similar decisions. They decided to, 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 to focus in and figure out what God was calling them to do. And they also, shortly thereafter, decided to be fully welcoming and celebrating communities. To welcome everyone, especially people who the church has harmed in the past. Those two churches, by the way, were down the street from each other, being Messiah and Trinity Reformed. Six years later, we are at a historic turning point at a time when there is so much division and so much not working together. We can do just that. Working together in a way that will, to God's glory, that will strengthen and help feed our local neighborhood here in Rotterdam, New York, in body, mind, and soul, and as Christy so beautifully said, uh, can provide a, a roadmap for faith communities across the country. This is that historic moment. This is that time. Friends, in the next two minutes, we're gonna, you're going to see a short video uh, with a, a, seeing a num the wide swath of folks from our faith community who have decided that they want to invest in this mission in the coming year. You'll see uh, pictures of folks who have decided that in some way they want to work together, not just to keep the lights on, not just to keep the church going, but to invest in that mission of building a common table where all are welcome, where all are affirmed as God's beloved children, where all are fed in body, mind, and soul. As you watch this video, I encourage you to, uh, if you haven't already done so with your physical intent card, you can either uh, um, email a statement of intent card or use our virtual link that should have been posted. And if you decide to, uh, uh, to, to, to make a statement of intent over the coming year, just say, I'm invested on Facebook. It's so important that we are all working together to support our common ministries together. With that in mind, last year we had 50 folks pledging to Messiah's ministries. A, no, a few, of th four different families in our congregation have gotten together, and if we can have 65 statements of intent, no matter the amount, they will give an additional $3,000 to our ministries here at Messiah. I hope you can join me in helping reach, meet that challenge and build a common table together.
Friends, thank you, thank you, thank you so, so much for continuing to support the ministries of our common faith community, of continuing to build that common table where all are filled in body, all are nourished in body, mind, and soul. Next week, we'll have an update from Penny and City, our financial secretary, uh, in terms of how we're doing and meeting our challenge. Uh, so stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, it's time to continue with our prayers of intercession, and we ask that you lift up your prayers in the comment section on Facebook Live or in your hearts at this time. like to begin by lifting up prayers for the family and friends of Nancy Stelrecht, one of our beloved members who passed away this past year and on her birthday. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We'd like to lift up prayers for Joyce Gresham for healing as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We'd like to lift up prayers for the Darcy family for the loss of a loved one. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We'll also lift up prayers for the uh, Longmire and Syrette families um, from the loss of Robert. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Suzanne asks that we lift up prayers for Leslie, Stephen, and Donna. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jill asks that we lift up prayers of thanksgiving for this beautiful fall day, and yes, it is so, so beautiful out there. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Judy asks that we lift up birthday blessings for Jacob, Lexi, Hilda Hofstetter, and Zaxon. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Linda asks that we lift up prayers for her co-worker, Karen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pete asks that we lift up prayers of thanksgiving for his dad, continued healing that so he can go home this Thursday. That is awesome news, Pete. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prayers for Barb's aunt, Nancy, who is in a nursing home and struggling. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Renee lifts up prayers for her extended family as they grieve the loss of their fathers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Beth lifts up prayers for her cousin Debbie, also praying for the, her bosses Mike and Frank as they undergo surgery in the coming weeks. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Betsy lifts up prayers of thanksgiving for all involved with our beautiful Sunday service. Thanks, Betsy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Linda lifts up prayers for Gina, Carly, Eddie, and Jonathan. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I'd also like to lift up prayers at this time for uh, all who are making decisions, uh, all who are um, in health care, uh, all those folks on the front line as uh, a third wave of coronavirus rises. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And I'd finally like to lift up prayers of thanksgiving uh, um, for the, all the incredible ways that our friends uh, at Trinity Reformed are, 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 are working and, 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 and envisioning what life might be like in service uh, to the community together. Um, it's just absolutely incredibly good news in the midst of so much difficult news. And we lift up all these prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abundant mercy. Amen. And the peace, oh, and as we have lifted up prayers for our community and world, we are reminded that we are called to go and bring the witness of God's love to the world. Would you join us in our sung response as we consider the words of the prophet Micah, what does the Lord require of you?
May the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you, please share a sign of God's peace with one another in your homes and on Facebook as well. We got some announcements. Sunday school. Wear your Halloween costume to Sunday school today at noon on Zoom. It's going to be awesome. Um, I'm just so thankful for April and Amanda and Cheryl for their incredible work in helping lead our young people as well as Betsy. Uh, we're, we're really kind of, folks are starting to kind of reconnect as the weather's getting a little bit uh, cooler with our, our, our virtual Sunday school ministries. And we're so thankful for the opportunity to share some time with our young people on Sunday morning. Please, please, please join us. Invite others to join us. It's going to be awesome. Confirmation tonight. We are uh, we're talking about. Uh, we had a great conversation last week about how we can reinterpret our, the scriptures to help us understand our current world. Uh, last week we we talked. We kind of did a comparison with uh, the Gospel of Matthew and the Gas- Gospel of Luke, looking at the different Christmas stories. We're going to continue the second part of that conversation tonight, 6 p.m. Yeah, so uh, this Wednesday, we are going to have a brief prayer service to recognize the feast of Simon and Jude, both apostles. And and Jude asked this question in the gospel about how can we recognize it's you, Jesus. And so we'll be talking about ways, places we can see Jesus uh, in this day. So join us this Wednesday at 6 p.m. And that's going to be, that's actually really opportune because at 7 p.m. we got something that we all can agree on is probably pretty important. So part of, uh, so I'm, as, I'm part of Schenectady Clergy Against Hate. And uh, this Wednesday at 7 p.m. we are offering a virtual interfaith nonpartisan pre-election vigil where folks, no matter their perspective, can stand together, can pray together for unity uh, and for, uh, for, for peace amidst such a, a difficult time and to confess that we, no, all of us uh, can do better and all of us must be a part of, of, of being together as one nation. And we will, of course, as well, uh, continue next Sunday. We had a great discussion this Sunday morning with our uh, adult uh, faith formation, uh, our anti-racist calling, and we will continue that the following week as well. Coming up in a few weeks is this really awesome program, this really awesome fundraiser. I already signed up, uh, and it's Sikkim Presents a Cut from the Pantry. It's a based off of that, that, that like cooking TV show, like cooking fight thing. Uh, and uh, I'm really, really excited about it, and it's a great way of supporting Schenectady Community Ministries, especially as they, too, are envisioning their new life as an interfaith community. And finally... You might be a new person uh, watching Messiah Lutheran Church. You might not get the weekly email updates yet. You might not get all the things that we send out. Uh, if not, we want to hear from you, and we want to learn how we can serve you best. So please uh, just uh, message me uh, at pastor at messiahsconnected.org or call our office phone number, and uh, just help us learn how we can serve you better. And finally, dear friends, at this time, if you'd like to make an online gift using Tively or via mail to Messiah, feel free to do so. I'm seeing one more really powerful prayer and, and something that we should be praying for uh, today as well, friends, that on, on Facebook that we ought to lift up before we continue. And that's uh, Steve who's lifting up prayers for everyone as the weather gets cold to have heat. We know that housing is one of the, the, the uh, most difficult, uh, affordable housing is one of the most difficult things uh, that is uh, going on in our society right now, especially when we're all called a sort of shelter. And so we lift up prayers for all those uh, who don't have heat or don't have a warm place to lay their head, much as Jesus experienced as well. And blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. You have set before us these gifts of your good creation. Prepare us for your heavenly banquet. Nourish us with this rich food and drink and send us forth to set tables in the midst of a suffering world through the bread of life. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. So we
God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in... Oh, I'm sorry, friends. It's been a long day. And the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all the drinks, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life, O God, that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. And friends, even when we cannot be physically together, we are one in Christ Jesus, united around a common table. Indeed, at this table, Jesus gathers us all together, the humble, the proud, the joyful, the grieving, the pious, and the profane, those of strong faith and those who long only for faith, to everyone without exception. Come, siblings in faith, and join here in spirit-filled community where all are fed in body, mind, and soul. body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with food beyond compare, the body and blood of Christ. Lead us from this place, nourished and forgiven into your beloved vineyard to wipe away the tears of all who hunger and thirst, guided by the example of the same Jesus Christ and led by the Holy Spirit now and forever. And God, creator of all things, speaking reformation into being. Jesus Christ, Savior of the world, raising the dead. Holy Spirit, living voice, calling and enlightening the church. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now, in the week ahead, and forever. Amen. Christ, you know.
Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold fast to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faith hearted, faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord. Your God. Rejoicing in the power of this Holy Spirit. Happy Reformation Sunday, dear friends. Amen.